In the summer of 2015, we initiated a study across 11 counties in North Central Texas to improve our understanding of the distribution and abundance of the Texas kangaroo rat, a species endemic to the state. This species is a large, long-tailed rodent that specializes in open, disturbed, and often overgrazed habitat. It is believed that historically this species benefited from disturbances such as prairie fires and activities of bison, including sand bathing, heavy grazing, and trampling by herds that ranged in the hundreds to thousands. Such disturbances reduce the amount of vegetation, thereby providing the open areas in which the species specializes. Our Texas Comptroller funded project was carried out by a team of six researchers from the Departments of Natural Resources Management and Biological Sciences at Texas Tech University. If one were to compile all the historical specimens of Texas kangaroo rats for museum collections throughout the United States, they would find that this rat has been encountered in 11 counties in Texas, as seen to the figure to the left, which is a map taken from the 2016 edition of the Mammals of Texas by David Schmidley and Robert Bradley, with the species having also been documented in Childers County. This species has also been documented from two counties in Oklahoma, although recent surveys in Oklahoma have failed to document the current distribution of the species in the state. In contrast, the last four comprehensive studies of the distribution of Texas kangaroo rats in Texas each found hotspots in the distribution in different places. Given the seemingly variable distribution of the species, our first objective was to conduct road surveys to determine its current distribution in the state. We surveyed nearly 900 sites in 12 counties. We documented Texas kangaroo rats in five, Childress, Cottle, Hardeman, Wichita, and Wilbarger. In the figure to the right, gray dots represent sampling sites where we did not document Texas kangaroo rats, and red dots represent those sites where we encountered them. Our second objective was to take all the available museum records and our own survey records and construct historical, present day, and future distribution models for the Texas kangaroo rat. A distribution model produces a map that shows the likely locations where species might exist. Distribution models combine the geographic coordinates of sites where species has been documented to occur and combines those coordinates with environmental information of those same sites. Our environmental information included climate variables such as patterns of precipitation and temperature, as well as land use data and information on soil characteristics. Based on this information, the distribution model then estimates the suitability of other locations where the species has not been sampled to determine if that site is suitable, in this case for the Texas kangaroo rat. Above is the distribution map that we made for the Texas kangaroo rat. Areas in red are regions where there's a high likelihood of encountering Texas kangaroo rats, whereas this likelihood decreases as you go to yellow, then green, then blue colors. As you can see, there's a large expanse of highly suitable habitat in Wilbarger and Wichita counties in the present. Highly suitable habitat was also estimated for Cottle, Childress, Hardeman, and Ford counties. We were also interested in constructing a model based on quantifiable habitat characteristics that could be used to better inform biologists and landowners as to the kinds of habitats that Texas kangaroo rats could be found or exhibit their greatest abundance. Such a model can indicate habitat characteristics most important to the presence and abundance of Texas kangaroo rats, as well as allow us to predict abundance and presence at particular sites across its geographic range. In 2016, we intensively sampled 35 sites and in 2018 sampled an additional 15 sites. As is illustrated in the figure to the left, at each site we laid down two 500 meter transects that were separated by 100 meters. Along each transect, we set 50 Sherman live traps, each separated by 10 meters. We ran these live traps for two nights to maximize the probability of capture of rodents. We cleared traps every morning. When we encounter rodents, we temporarily marked them so that we could count the number of unique individuals of each species on each transect. On each mammal transect, we ran four additional environmental transects that were 25 by 2 meters. On these, we measured perennial plant biomass, annual plant and grass cover, and soil composition and compaction. We had a productive trapping effort. In total, we captured 1,296 rodents from 15 species, 30 individuals of which were Texas kangaroo rats. The distribution of rodent species captured in terms of their abundance as well as percent of sites where they were encountered is in the figure on the bottom right. These two figures describe the quantitative characteristics of our model. We use four suites of data to construct each model. Six vegetation characteristics, three climate variables, one soil variable, and the abundances of each of the 15 rodent species that co-occur with Texas kangaroo rats. Numbers in the circles above represent the amount of variation in either abundance on the left or presence absence on the right 
of Texas kangaroo rats accounted for by a characteristic or characteristics combined. As we will describe in more detail later, all variables together accounted for only 25% of the variation in abundance and about 30% of the variation in presence absence of Texas kangaroo rats. In both cases, models were not statistically significant, meaning that our models accounted for no more variation than model in which Texas kangaroo rats were distributed randomly. We believe that the reason models do not account for much variation is because of either dispersal or abundance limitation, which we describe in the relevant section. We obtained genetic samples from 37 individual Texas kangaroo rats. The distribution of these samples is illustrated in the above left panel. There may be at least two populations of Texas kangaroo rats, one to the east in red in the below left panel and one to the west in blue. We can examine the allelic composition of individuals from these two areas, and if they are very different, this suggests two different populations. Different alleles are simply different genetic variants within a species. In the figure to the right, each vertical bar represents an individual kangaroo rat. The western alleles are in blue and eastern alleles are in pink. Individuals that carry both western and eastern alleles have both colors in their bar. As you can see, a number of western individuals have primarily, if not exclusively, western alleles, and many of the eastern individuals have primarily or exclusively eastern alleles. There are a large number of individuals that have both eastern and western alleles. This pattern suggests that there may be appreciable population subdivision. Nonetheless, there is still contemporary or recent gene flow between the two populations. We used remote sensing technologies to attempt to model and detect Texas kangaroo rat burrows. If possible, this would allow for a remote sensing means of estimating abundance of Texas kangaroo rat at the state level. Currently, 13 centimeter resolution imagery is available for the state of Texas. Our goal was to determine if this resolution was sufficient and if not, what resolution would be necessary to achieve the same. We began by collecting imagery of a number of different resolutions using a drone flown over the Getze Farm in Wichita County. We used spatial data to map well-drained areas of higher elevation to avoid occasional flooding where sparse vegetation is predominant as a proxy to find suitable areas for Texas kangaroo rat burrow presence in both models. The county scale model included cropscape land cover land use data and the national flood hazards layer. Only a total of seven from 41 burrows were far outside of the area predicted as suitable by the landscape model, meaning that 83% of the points fell within the predicted suitable area or in its adjacencies in the Getze Ranch. No validation was performed for the county scale model. We were able to construct a good model to predict Texas kangaroo rat burrows based on 2.5 millimeter spatial resolution data. This model was based on high resolution data characterizing aspect, elevation, slope, and vegetation cover. We were able to correctly classify four out of the five burrows we used to test this model. The initial component of our project was to conduct road surveys across the 11 counties in Texas where the species has previously been found, plus Hall County, which is immediately adjacent, in order to determine its current distribution in the state. Recent surveys have failed to document the species in Oklahoma, suggesting that it no longer occurs there. Moreover, the last four comprehensive studies of the distribution of the Texas kangaroo rat have each found the species in different subsets of counties, suggesting that an updated survey was necessary to identify where the species is found today. As you can see, we surveyed at a total of 871 sites, which includes the 60 locations in Hall County across the region. Furthermore, you can see from the red squares that we encountered the Texas kangaroo rat in five of those counties, Childress, Cottle, Hardeman, Wichita, and Wilbarker. None were encountered during our Hall County surveys. In terms of our rodent captures, we identified 14 different species of rodents along county roads. Of those, the Texas kangaroo rat was the sixth most abundant species and represented about 5% of all the rodents we captured. The cotton rat, Sigmodon hispidus, was the most abundant species, and this may be due to all the rain that this part of the state had received in 2015. The other kangaroo rat species, Dipotomys ordi, was the second most abundant across the region. Based on our capture results, we also looked at co-occurrence among these different rodent species to see if there were any patterns of positive or negative co-occurrence. That is, did species occur together more or less often than might be expected? In looking at these results, we found a number of interesting things. First, you can see from the gray cells that a majority of the potential occurrences were random, meaning that species did not occur more or less often than expected. Second, you can see that a number of species occurred together less often than expected, as indicated in yellow, which could be due to things like competition or different habitat associations between the two species. 
For Texas kangaroo rats, most potential co-occurrences were random, but there were negative co-occurrence patterns with both cotton rats and the other kangaroo rat species in the region, or its kangaroo rat. Based on our knowledge of these species, these patterns are likely due to differences in habitat associations. This is especially interesting given that these were the two most abundant species in our surveys, and may indirectly point to the limited availability of suitable habitat for Texas kangaroo rats, at least along county roads. As an additional part of our project, we were interested in constructing a model based on quantifiable habitat characteristics that could be used to better inform biologists and landowners as to the kinds of habitats that Texas kangaroo rats could be found or exhibit their greatest abundances. Such a model can indicate habitat characteristics most important to the presence and abundance of Texas kangaroo rats, as well as allow us to predict abundance and presence at particular sites across this geographic range. In 2016, we intensively sampled 35 sites and in 2018 sampled an additional 15 sites. In total, we surveyed at 50 locations on private and state land, which includes Copper Break State Park, Lake Arrowhead State Park, and Matador Wildlife Management Area, to identify environmental factors influencing Texas kangaroo rat distribution and abundance. In addition to trapping rodents, we measured the listed soil and vegetation characteristics at each site, and also obtained data on average temperature and precipitation patterns for each site. Our sampling was dictated to a certain degree by private land access, but we managed to survey across much of this region. From this figure, you can see that we documented Texas kangaroo rats at six sites from two counties. Moreover, you can see the layout of each of our sites. At each site, we established paired transects separated by 100 meters that spanned 500 meters each, and were operated for two consecutive nights at each site, as well as adjacent vegetation plots where we collected our soil and vegetation data. Along each transect, we set 50 Sherman live traps, each separated by 10 meters. We ran these traps for two nights to maximize the probability of capture of rodents. We cleared traps every morning, and when we encountered rodents, we temporarily marked them so that we could count the number of unique individuals of each species on each transect. On each mammal transect, we ran four additional environmental transects that were, that were 25 by two meters. On these, we measured perennial plant biomass, annual plant and grass cover, and soil composition and compaction. We had a productive trapping effort. Here, there are two axes to look at. On the left, we have the average number of individuals at sites where they are encountered, corresponding to the gray bars. On the right, we have the proportion of sites at which a species was present, corresponding to the line. In total, we captured 1,296 rodents from 15 species, 30 of which were Texas kangaroo rats. This means that the Texas kangaroo rat was the fourth most abundant species and fifth most widely distributed, as in it was found at the fifth highest number of sites. As with our road surveys, cotton rats were the most abundant and widely distributed species, which again may be indicative of the high amount of grass and other vegetation cover across this region. These two figures describe the quantitative characteristics of our model. We use four suites of data to construct each model, six vegetation variables, three climate variables, one soil variable, and the abundance per site of each of the 15 rodent species that co-occur with Texas kangaroo rats. Numbers in the circles above represent the amount of variation in either abundance on the left or presence absence on the right of Texas kangaroo rats accounted for by a characteristic or characteristics combined. For example, in the figure on the left, 3.6% of the variation in Texas kangaroo rat abundance was accounted for by abundance of other rodent species, 1.9% by the combined effect of climate and other rodent species, and 1.6% by the combined effects of other rodents, climate, and vegetation. The sum of all numbers of each of the figures indicates the total amount of variation accounted for. Neither model accounted for much variation. All variables together accounted for only about 25% of the variation in abundance and about 30% of the variation in presence absence of Texas kangaroo rats. In both cases, models were not statistically significant meaning that our models accounted for no more variation than a model in which Texas kangaroo rats were distributed randomly. We believe that the reason models did not account for much variation is because of either dispersal or abundance limitation. In dispersal limitation, individuals cannot get to all the suitable sites. In abundance limitation, there simply are not enough individuals to occupy all acceptable sites. As a result of either one of these forms of limitation, there are many acceptable sites that remain unoccupied. As a result, this increases the amount of variation that is not accounted for by the model and prevents us from making confident predictions regarding what habitat characteristics are related to either abundance 
or presence absence of Texas kangaroo rats. This graph depicts associations between individual rodent species and environmental characteristics. In general, the length of arrows represents magnitudes and the proximity between arrows indicates how strongly associated they are. Arrows running in opposite directions would demonstrate strong negative relationships. However, we can see, as with the previous slide, that there's little evidence of any relationship between Texas kangaroo rat abundance and particular environmental variables. This figure demonstrates that Texas kangaroo rats tend to be found at sites with soils that have more silt and clay, although we trapped at sites and failed to document them across a range of soil conditions. Things like this, i.e. the overlap between sites of presence and absence, suggest that Texas kangaroo rats are not present at all areas with suitable habitat. Finally, this figure represents the actual soil composition present at the six sites in which we documented Texas kangaroo rats. As you can see, this confirms the work of many other scientists, including Roberts, Packard, Martin, Matoka, Getze, and Nelson, among others, that Texas kangaroo rats are typically found in loamy soils. In particular, we show this is true regardless of what part of the region we find them in, such as the eastern versus western subregions. A number of important conservation and management decisions rely on knowledge of where a species is presently located and how large or small its distribution is. Moreover, understanding how that distribution is changing over time is an important indication of the overall status of a species and what factors may be driving these changes. Niche modeling is an important and increasingly popular tool to predict species distributions. As the figure from Biodiversity Science indicates, environmental niche modeling, also referred to as species distribution modeling, takes measures of environmental characteristics where a species was found and uses that to estimate distribution across the landscape based on probability of habitat suitability. In doing so, these models produce maps that show the likely locations where species might exist. We used historical occurrences and results from our own surveys to build historical, present day, and future predictions of Texas kangaroo rat distribution. When building our historical distribution model, we identified all published historical records mapped out in this figure, which included all 11 documented counties in Texas, plus the two additional localities in Oklahoma. Using the historical occurrence records, combined with climate variables such as precipitation and temperature, as well as land cover, we predicted the historical distribution using the program accent. Areas in red are regions where there should be a high likelihood of encountering Texas kangaroo rats, whereas this likelihood decreases as you go to yellow, then green, then blue. As you can see, the model highlights two distinct areas representing the highest probability of habitat suitability towards the western and eastern portions of the region. Moreover, the model indicates a small area of high probability of suitability just north of the Red River in Oklahoma, where the species had been documented in the past. To predict the present and future distribution of the Texas kangaroo rat, we used occurrence records from our distribution surveys in Texas described in a previous section. Importantly, because we only surveyed within Texas, and because the Texas kangaroo rat has not been documented in Oklahoma surveys for several decades, we focused on Texas only for these models. You can see once again that we only documented the species in five of the 11 counties. Here are the results from a preliminary niche model in which we use climatic variables and 2011 land cover data. You can see that, as opposed to the historical distribution model, there is now one area with a relatively high probability of habitat suitability. However, although our preliminary model was similar to many other species distribution models in that we initially only used climate and land cover data, the existing literature and our own work has indicated that soil may be a limiting resource for the species. The figure above shows the regional extent of A, land cover, and B, soil categories where we documented the species. Thus, we work to include soil as an additional factor in our models. In doing so, we created an updated present day model. As you can see, there is a large expanse of highly suitable habitat in Wilbarger and Wichita counties in the present. Suitable habitat was also estimated for Cottle, Childress, Hardeman, and Ford counties. Nevertheless, there are no longer two distinct areas of high probability of habitat suitability. Moreover, in looking at the importance of the different variables that we used in the model, we can see that soil texture proved to clearly be the most important. This provides further support for the importance of soil. Finally, we predicted the future distribution of the Texas kangaroo rat by using accepted climate change projections for 2085. Once again, there are large areas of high probability of habitat suitability in Wilbarger and Wichita counties, although there is predicted to be fewer areas in the counties to the west that are predicted to be suitable in the present day prediction. 
The objective of this part of the study was to determine the efficacy of using high-resolution imagery and drone technology as a tool to count Texas kangaroo rat burrows across the distribution of the species in order to obtain a range-wide estimation of its present-day abundance. A total of 26 burrows were located and characterized from the Getsy Ranch. This study was confined to sites number one and two on the figure shown, all properties that are managed by the Getsy family. Our methodology for this was comprised of three stages. The first stage included an initial characterization of burrows using imagery and digital surface models, in this case terrain elevation, collected from a drone, as well as the use of drone imagery to evaluate the impact of pixel size on burrow detection. This information allowed us to determine burrow characteristics that could make them visible and detectable from airborne systems, determine whether signs of activity, example trails, can be mapped, and the minimum pixel resolution needed to effectively identify these Texas kangaroo rat burrow characteristics across the landscape. In the second and third stage, we evaluated the effectiveness of modeling approaches at the county, landscape, and local scale to predict the location of Texas kangaroo rat burrows. Data, data gathered for the first stage helped inform these two modeling approaches. These models are intended to serve as an example of a potential workflow for Texas kangaroo rat burrow mapping that could start with a landscape scale model or county scale model to locate suitable areas of borough presence and follow up with a campaign of drone-based data collection over most suitable areas. In this last stage, drone imagery would help to detect and count active and inactive boroughs from aerial surveys. From all 26 boroughs characterized on the ground, 18 had visible features that allowed proper characterization with drone imagery at 2.5 millimeter pixel resolution. In general, Texas kangaroo rat burrows were located in circular or linear mounds characterized by a sudden increase in elevation range, uh, with the average being 60 centimeters, and an increase of the mean slope as compared with the surrounding terrain, as well as a high diversity of aspect values, like direction of slope. This means that the mounds were always prominent and easily detectable using a surface model at this pixel resolution. In the second stage, we use spatial data to map well-drained areas of higher elevation that avoid occasional flooding, where sparse vegetation is predominant as a proxy to find suitable areas for Texas kangaroo rat burrow presence. We applied a simple weighted overlay approach in ArcGIS. Both vegetation and elevation data were assigned the same level of influence on the model. In the resulting model, areas with elevation and vegetation characteristics suitable for Texas kangaroo rat burrows were highlighted in red. We used NAEP, which is 0.5 and 0.6 meter pixel resolution, and a digital elevation model from TINRIS at 10 meter resolution. The county scale model included cropscape, land cover, land use data, and the national flood hazard layer. Only a total of seven from 41 boroughs were far outside of the area predicted as suitable by the landscape model, meaning that 83% of the points fell within the predicted suitable area or in its adjacencies in the Getsy Ranch. The county scale model shows a clear concentration of highly suitable areas for Texas kangaroo rat borough presence in the northwestern and north central portions of Wichita County. Interestingly, highly suitable areas highlighted in red show strong similarities to the suitable areas predicted by the MaxSent model described earlier for northwestern Wichita County. Further aerial or field surveys can use these models to locate specific land properties to survey in the ground. The approach used for the local scale model is intended to offer a method to detect and map Texas kangaroo rat burrows using very high resolution imagery and surface model data collected via drone or airplane mounted cameras. In this stage, we generated a slope and aspect product from the digital surface model at the 2.5 millimeter spatial resolution, as well as a vegetation cover product from unsupervised classification of the drone imagery. We use GIS neighborhood operators to highlight spatial patterns in slope, elevation, aspect, and vegetation density at the local scale. A weighted overlay was used to combine these variables and predict the location of mounds with soil exposed. In the figure shown, the model predicted highly suitable areas adjacent to and along a corridor of elevated ground where a fence line was built. Each variable was given a level of influence which were set after running the model in several iterations. Four out of five Texas kangaroo rat burrows identified in field surveys in the same area corresponded spatially to highly suitable areas indicated by the model. These points were independent sample locations. Burrow information was not used to derive the model. So what are the main takeaways of this? If we proceed with drone or airborne surveys, we can use a model such as the one proposed above to move forward with predicting Texas kangaroo rat sites 
suggesting that it is doable but computer intensive as it may take six months to a year to analyze the imagery and still likely needing access to private land for surveys. Now we will discuss population genetics of Dipoid mesolator. Population genetics serves as an opportunity to investigate within and between population genetic differences, which provides insights into local adaptation, population structure and health, and demographic history of a species. From 2015 to 2017, we live trapped Texas kangaroo rats from within its historical range. Once a rat was captured, we pulled two large whiskers from either side of the face in accordance with guidelines developed from the TTU Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. We extracted DNA from these samples. Additionally, we extracted DNA from liver tissue of voucher specimens. In all, 37 contemporary samples were included in the genetic analysis. Here we have the locations of each of the 37 samples used in the genetic analysis. Each blue star indicates a Texas kangaroo rat genetic sample. We also received Texas kangaroo rat toe clips from collaborators. These toe clippings were from studies conducted by Robert Martin and Kenneth Matoka in the 1980s and 1990s. DNA was also extra extracted from these and 28 samples were used for genetic analysis. All samples were collected in Hardison County. To analyze these samples, we used a newer technique that provides thousands of genetic locations to analyze, not just about a dozen. This technique is known as restriction site associated DNA sequencing or RADSeq. We digest the DNA and specialized proteins cut up the DNA based on a recognition site, which is a certain nucleotide sequence. These sites can then be compared across individuals and populations to determine the amount of diversity within a population. We had two levels of analysis, a temporal level, which compared the historical samples to contemporary samples. Within the contemporary samples, there's also a spatial level, which divided the population into east in red and west in blue, based on precipitation, soil, and vegetation characteristics. Redeem is simply a subpopulation that is isolated from other subpopulations. Population structure refers to the genetic patterns within a population due to another factor, namely geographic space, and structure plots are a valuable tool for investigating this. To read a structure plot, note that each vertical bar is a sample. Different color bars can represent different deems. Here, there are two deems, a blue deem and a gray deem. Individuals can be a mixture of different deems. This is called admixture, and this can indicate gene flow or its opposite, the beginning of population isolation. Here is the structure plot for the 37 contemporary samples. Across both themes, most samples appear admixed. Interestingly, five samples collected near the Texas-Oklahoma border in Wichita County were mostly associated with the pink theme. Another way to visualize population structure is by a principal components analysis, or PCA. A PCA reduces the data so that it can be viewed in two-dimensional space. The plot generated captures the unique space of the samples. It is a property of the data. For the plot shown, all 28 individuals were collected in Hardeman County. As expected, most of them cluster together. Three samples did not fall within this cluster and could indicate possible transients, or rats, that were dispersing. The PCA for contemporary samples recreates the geographic arrangement of the samples. What is interesting is the separation between the Cottle County samples and the Hardeman Childress samples on PC2, despite their geographic proximity. To summarize the genetic work on the Texas kangaroo rat thus far, there appears to be no drastic loss in genetic diversity when comparing historical samples to contemporary samples. Moreover, there is no significant genetic differences between contemporary deems from the east and the west. The PCA and structure plot do alert to some population structure. However, this could be a result of sampling bias as we were not able to collect samples on and surrounding the Wagner Ranch. We would like to acknowledge the Texas Comptroller's Office of Public Accounts for funding. We'd also like to acknowledge the Stevens, Bradley, and Ray Labs at Texas Tech University for logistical support during field work. Finally, we would like to acknowledge Dr. Getze and several other supportive landowners for research access. <laughs>